Hello everyone, welcome back to Technology Moments and in this series of videos dedicated to high-speed networks, maybe one of the most important components of such networks are the network adapters. As such, we're going to talk about today about the TP-Link 10 Gigabit PCI Express TX401. We usually like to compare the speed of networks to speed of traffic. Having a 10 Gigabit per second network doesn't mean that packets are going to travel 10 times as fast. What is more likely to be compared to is having 10 lanes. That means that you're going to have more packets traveling simultaneously. Jumbo packets are going to be like buses and people are going to play the role of data. If you currently have a server storing several terabytes of information and sometimes data coming in and out gets into a bottleneck, this and a small 10 gigabit Ethernet switch will do a very nice job evacuating traffic in and off the server. By the way, prices of these small 10 gigabit Ethernet switches are dropping dramatically, something very good for small businesses as well as for consumers. We're going to be using today the US16XG, which is actually an overkill for this lab scenario that we're going to have uh, today, but it is a very robust switch that you might consider if you're going to concentrate huge amounts of data in much bigger networks. This is what you get when you buy the TX401. You get the installation guide, you get the CD, the network interface card, the bracket for low profile chassis, and you're going to get a category 6A Ethernet shielded cable. The first thing that caught our attention about the TX401 from TP-Link was the design. Uh, the heatsink may play a very important role um, in very demanding scenarios where huge amounts of data are to be transported. As we said, comparing networks to traffic may be the key point of designing your own network, as it involves budget, distances, storage, speed, and collision prevention. So let's see how easy it is to install this network adapter and have it running. The first thing that you need to identify is a free PCI Express slot. Uh, power down your computer, install it, secure it, and boot up your computer. Once you have it back and running, you're going to be able to connect the network interface adapter to your switch. In this case, we're going to use this category 7 cable. And the first thing that you need to make sure of is that the link is established at 10 gigabit. For example, this LED uh, indicator is lighting up white, showing you that it is a 10 gigabit per second link. Of course, the same indicator will light up in your network adapter, showing you that it is a 10 gigabit per second link. Again, traffic, 1 gigabit per second and 10 gigabit per second is having more lanes so you can transport information, packets, or that means people in this case, to high density areas of your network. That is going to be like the uplinks from one switch to another one. In traffic, the equivalent scenario is going to be going from downtown to the suburbs to medium densely populated areas and such things. You are not going to need highways in order for you to get uh, where there are two, three, or four uh, small buildings built. Something that is directly related to the uplink of the switches of many ports or like this huge concentration and aggregation switches. Network interface cards that are going to be like the bridge for not only network attached storages, but um, servers that are going to need huge amounts of data being managed. For example, the network attached storage is going to play the role as a huge parking lot. Interesting thing that we noticed is that when we booted the computer, the network adapter was already configured in a couple of seconds, so we didn't need to install the driver that comes in the CD. As you can see right here, the Ethernet was uh, immediately configured, the 10 gigabit per second link was established, and our computer was ready to go with a 10 gigabit per second adapter in no time. We also linked this device with a pluggable 2.5 gigabit per second adapter from Pluggable, which worked also perfectly. Uh, we invite you to watch this video as we stressed this uh, little device to the limit, and we came with very nice conclusions that you might like if you want to give your computer or your laptop greater capabilities of data transfer beyond one gigabit per second network. The performance of this network adapter, as you can see, was outstanding. For example, in our practice, a daily network-based backup task that used to take about 25 to 30 minutes now takes less than five. And this is not even taking it up to the limit, as you can see here. Links with the switches were flawless, the auto-negotiation was very fast, we could not verify installation on Linux-based operating systems, 
Uh, and even though the question is still open in Amazon for how many people have used it successfully in such operating systems, the manufacturer argues that the drivers included in the CD work in this operating system as well. We hope our experience installing and using this network adapter has been of any help for you. We invite you as well to watch our other videos regarding high-speed networks and specifically the one dedicated to the Unify US 16XG, which is an outstanding, very powerful concentrator of traffic for your network. Of course, if your enterprise demands such high traffic availability. If you're interested in buying any of the products you watched on this video and support us in the process of creating this content, we invite you to visit our storefront in Amazon to which we leave the link in the description. Thanks again for watching this video and see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.